So we've previously seen that if we place a current carrying wire into a magnetic field, it feels a force. And this force can be described with the equation F is equal to I L cross B. So let's now consider what happens if we put a rectangular loop of wire like this one into a magnetic field. So let's let our loop have a length L, have a width D, and we'll let it consist of N turns of wire and we'll send a current I around the loop. Now we're going to pivot our loop about an axis down its middle as shown in the figure. And let's now calculate the force which each side of the loop experiences. So the bottom and top sides don't experience any force because for these sides, the current and the magnetic field are parallel. So I L cross B is equal to zero. However, the left side and the right side do experience a force because the current is flowing in a direction perpendicular to the magnetic field. So we can use our right hand rule to work out the direction of this force. For the left hand side, you can see that because the current is going up and the magnetic field is going to the right, this is going to feel a force into the screen. Whereas for the right side, we've got the current flowing down and the magnetic field going to the right. So this is going to feel a force out of the screen. We can calculate the size of the force with our force equation. So for the left hand side, it is equal to ILBN. And for the right hand side, it is also equal to ILBN. So these two sides have equal but opposite forces. So there's no net force on our loop of wire in the magnetic field. However, these forces are acting at different points. So we do have a net torque. So remember that torque is described with the equation torque is equal to R cross F, where R is the distance from the pivot point to where the force is applied, the displacement rather, because it is a vector, and F is the force that is applied there. So considering our left hand side, we can see that the torque is going to be given by D over two, because that's the distance between that pivot point and the wire, which is where the force is applied. The size of the force we said was given by I L B N. And then in this case, the R vector and the F vector are perpendicular to each other. R is going to the left while the force is going into the page. So with our right hand rule, we can see that the torque is going to be directed downwards on this side. Now for the right hand side, we've also got that the torque is equal to D over two, because that's the distance of the wire from the pivot point times I L B N, because that's the size of the force. And in this case, the R vector is to the right and the force is out of the screen, which with our right hand rule, we can see also gives a torque down. So these two torques are in the same direction. So if we want to work out the net torque, we can just add them together. The net torque is equal to the torque on the left plus the torque on the right, which is just equal to D I L B N. And if we want, we can write this as I A B N, where A stands for the area of the loop, which in this case is equal to L times D. Now that gives us the torque when it is aligned exactly like this. However, that torque is going to start at rotating. And as it rotates, that torque is going to decrease because R cross F is going to decrease. So we can write the torque as torque is equal to I A B N sine theta, where sine theta is the angle between the normal to the loop and the magnetic field as shown in this figure here. So this is essentially how motors work. We send a current through a coil of wire and this causes a net torque, which starts that coil of wire rotating. Electric motors convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. 
So the current flowing through the two sides of our loop is converted into kinetic energy as that loop starts to turn. Now in practice, there's many modifications that we need to make to this very simple motor in order to make it work better. One modification is that if we're using DC current, direct current, then we need to have a split ring commutator joining the power supply to the wires through which the current flows. So this is because if we imagine that torque acting, at some point the coil is going to get to the place where the normal to the loop of the coil is parallel to the magnetic field. At that point, there's not going to be any torque acting upon it. So it will continue to move because it's got some angular velocity. But once it's moved past that point, the torque acting upon it is going to push it back in the opposite direction. So it'll slowly come to a stop. So if we have a split ring commutator, this will switch the direction that the current flows through the loop once it gets to that vertical position. And so the torque will then keep acting in the same direction, keeping our coil turning. Now this is not necessary for AC alternating current power sources, but when we're using AC power sources, we do need to be careful that the period of the rotation is aligned with the frequency of the AC power which is being used. Now another thing that we need to account for is that as the coil starts to turn, we're going to have a changing magnetic flux through that coil. And we know that a changing magnetic flux induces a current to flow or induces an EMF. So this current which is induced is going to oppose the applied current and it's known as a back EMF. So the amount of current which is generated in this way is going to be proportional to the angular velocity of our loop. And so as our loop is just starting up, we're going to have a lot of a much lower current which is induced in the loop. Now this needs to be accounted for in the design because at that point we'll have a much higher current flowing through our loop and as we know if we have a current which is really high flowing through a wire then the wire will overheat. So we need to make sure that in the circuit there's some way to reduce the current at the start before the induced current is well established opposing that applied current. Another common modification is to use three phase power. So if we use three phase power to create the magnetic field, then we can create a magnetic field that rotates around as the coil rotates in that magnetic field. So this can mean that we can always keep the normal to the plane of the loop pretty much aligned with the magnetic field, which is going to increase the torque which is applied. So generators actually work much like motors but in reverse. So in a generator, we're creating electrical energy and we do that by using mechanical energy to start a coil rotating through a magnetic field and then because of Faraday's law, we get that induced current flowing through that coil which we can then harvest and this is how we create electrical energy. So power plants essentially use some power source such as burning coal which heats water, the water forms steam which starts a coil turning in a magnetic field and this is how we get electrical energy from coal.